Normally when we talk about severe weather, we focus on things like damaging wind gusts, hail and tornadoes. But when severe storms threaten an area, there are actually other types of destructive events that can occur. Of course, we saw this in August 2020 with the derecho that hit Iowa. But for the purpose of this edition of the local five weather lab, though, I'm here to explain the microburst. It actually happened back on Independence Day 2019. A microburst caused significant damage to several homes in the small northwest Iowa town of Rock Valley. It happened in the middle of the night while people in the area were sleeping and produced wind gusts at roughly 80 miles per hour over a very short period of time. A microburst is an outward burst of strong winds at or near the surface of the ground coming from an overhead thunderstorm. It normally happens in a small concentrated area that's less than two miles wide and can either be accompanied by heavy rain called a wet microburst or with no rain at all called a dry microburst. With a microburst, wind speeds can occasionally exceed 100 miles per hour. It happens like this when dry air begins to mix in with the ongoing precipitation in a thunderstorm, the dry air causes the droplets in the cloud to evaporate, and this leads to a rapid drop in temperature known as evaporative cooling. Cool air sinks and begins to gain momentum as more dry air mixes in and eventually turns into a speeding column of air, eventually hitting the ground and fanning out from the base of the thunderstorm. As you might guess, the speed at which this air comes down from the storm often results in wind damage to areas within close proximity to the thunderstorm. Microbursts can be challenging to predict because it really depends on exactly how much dry air exists higher up in the atmosphere. It's just another reminder that any thunderstorm, even on a seemingly non-severe weather day, can spell trouble at the surface if it's influenced by some other force in the atmosphere. For the Local 5 Weather Lab, I'm meteorologist Brandon Lawrence.